Okay, so today we're going to be looking at a compressor and receiver assembly. Now, uh, this assembly here is actually used to provide compressed air to the CNC machine, and we're actually in the plant room at the back of the CNC workshop now. Um, what I'm going to do first of all is just tell you a little bit about the, uh, about the compressor unit and how it operates and then we'll look at some of the safety features that are, that are included on here um, and then you should have a, a better understanding of how we can take compressed air and use that to produce mechanical movement for powering cylinders um, and powering pneumatic, uh, pneumatic components. So first of all then, what we're looking at here um, on top of the receiver, the bottom part of the assembly is the receiver and on the top here we have the compressor itself. Now the way the compressor works is to take air, draw it in through the air filter and compress that air. This, this compressor here is actually a two-stage uh, two compressor, so what it does first of all is it draws air in through the air filter here into the first stage compressor. And if you, uh, what you can probably notice there is that the first stage compressor is actually quite significantly larger than the second stage compressor. The reason for that is in the first stage compressor the air is taken and it's compressed and then once it's, uh, once it's reached the, the end of that first stage of compression it's then into the, it's fed into the second stage compressor where it's compressed further. Once that second stage compression has taken place, that air is then delivered into the receiver at the bottom here. And all this is is just a, a holding vessel to keep that air. One other thing that's worth pointing out is that the pipework that connects the, uh, the first stage compressor to the second stage compressor has a number of uh, kind of veins, um, a number of protrusions on it. And what they're there for is actually to cool the air. Now when you take a body of air and you compress it, what happens to that air is that the, uh, the temperature of it actually increases. So the, the air moving from the first stage compressor to the second stage compressor is going to be very hot. Um, what we want to do is to remove some of that heat before it's, uh, before it's compressed further and fed into the receiver. Once in the receiver, that compressed air is stored and what we have then is a reserve of compressed air that can be used and fed up to the, uh, up to the CNC machine. If we didn't have the receiver assembly on the bottom here, then that compressor would have to run constantly whenever the CNC machine was being used. By having a receiver, what we do is the, uh, the motor itself or the compressor will be running when the air pressure in the receiver becomes too low, so that will force more compressed air into the receiver. Once the receiver's full or once the working pressure's reached, then the, uh, then the compressor can stop running. It's a way of saving load on the compressor and also ensuring that we've got a constant supply of compressed air for the, for the CNC machine. Okay, so as you probably noticed from the uh, previous part of the video, we're a little short of space here in this plant room. Um, but what I've done now is bring the camera inside just to show you an, uh, another couple of key features and just to outline some of the, uh, the safety features or um, some of the things that are governed by uh, the, the safety regulation for pressure, uh, for pressure vessels. Um, in, the, in this camera position you can probably see what I mentioned there about the, um, about the first stage compressor um, being significantly larger than the second stage and also if you look um, just behind the, um, the compressor you can also see the, uh, the veins that are used for uh, removing the heat after, after each stage of compression. So here we're looking um, just at the back of the compressor here. Um, in order to outline some of the, the safety features and, and to highlight some of the operation, uh, the operation parameters, um, I'm going to show you a number of components. Um, first of all, over on the uh, left hand side here, we have an electronic pressure switch. Now the way that that switch works is, as I mentioned before, when the pressure in the receiver drops, uh, dr drops below a certain pressure, we want the compressor to start running in order to refill the, uh, in, in order to refill the receiver and to increase the pressure in the receiver. And that's exactly how that switch works. It monitors the pressure. When the pressure's too low, the compressor begins to run. And then when the pressure reach working, reaches working pressure, um, that switch switches the compressor off. In ideal working conditions, the uh, the pressure in the uh, in the receiver would never never go past the working pressure. If there was a fault on that switch and the compressor kept running, then you can imagine that could potentially be hazardous if the if the pressure in the receiver went uh, went above and beyond the working pressure. So on the other side of the compressor, first of all we have a pressure gauge which will, um, which will uh, give a visual display of the pressure within the, uh, within the receiver itself. We can see at the moment that it's around 9 bar 
um, and what will basically happen is if the uh, the working pressure was to be exceeded as a result of the pressure switch failing and the compressor continuing to run then at the back of the pressure uh, gauge there we have a mechanical pressure relief valve now what the pressure relief valve does is it basically has a, uh, a, um, a valve component whereby as the pressure increases past a safe, uh, a safe pressure, um, the valve will lift open and allow any excess air to release. Okay, so that's actually a mechanical valve. It doesn't rely on any electronics to switch it off. It's purely mechanical. When the pressure's too high, um, the pressure forces a spring and uh, uh, forces against the spring and causes that valve to open and release the uh, the excess air. It's a very important safety feature that must be on uh, any compressor of this type. Then finally, we have an information plate. Okay, so the information plate that we're looking at here is for the, the receiver or the, pre uh, the pressure vessel underneath the compressor. Um, and this provides a number of key uh, significant pieces of information. First of all, it's got the, the name of the manufacturing company. Um, and it also provides information about the vessel itself. So as we just go through here, there's a serial number for that component. Uh, so we know where it's manufactured. We also have a serial number for it. Um, there's a drawing number so that it can be identified from the drawings and then it also has some information about operating pressures and hydrostatic test pressures. First of all the design pressure that is um, considered to be the highest safe working pressure for that vessel. Okay, We shouldn't be running our compressor any higher than 220 psi um, on a uh, on a day to day basis. Um, if you notice though directly above that where we've got hydrostatic test pressure if you can see that that value is actually 330 psi. Now what this means is that the hydrostatic test pressure is higher than the uh, than the design pressure for the vessel. The reason for that is when the uh, when they carry out any safety checks on the vessel they need to test it at a higher pressure than it's going to be operating on on a day-to-day -day basis to ensure that it's capable of of handling uh, higher pressures. It's a means of ensuring that there's a safety factor incorporated uh, into the running pressures. So what they would do um, is they would fill the uh, fill the the vessel itself with water and then they would um, they would place a pump onto the vessel to increase the pressure and work it until it's up until up to the hydrostatic test pressure to ensure that the the welds can co cope with those pressures um, and to ensure that the the vessel itself isn't going to burst at those higher pressures. Um, another thing that they would do to ensure that the uh, the uh, the vessel was safe for operation is they would do a visual inspection. Um, and the way that that would happen is they would remove the uh, the inspection plates here. They would be unscrewed and taken off, and then that would give them access into the vessel so that they can actually check inside there to ensure there's no corrosion, um, to check the wall thick the wall thickness is wall thickness of the vessel, um, and to make sure it's still safe for operation. Okay, so that's all of the safety features covered. Thanks for listening.